up at the top you see that red button if it is not on somebody please remind me because one day may be your day to need the recording okay I am not good at remember the recording. I have a sticky over here and I have an assistant who is telling me remember about the recording, but if we forget and the sticky falls off or I just get in the zone, which sometimes that happens with me, we'll just go from there, okay? Is anybody afraid of this process or are you all kind of excited about what's going to happen here? And um, just let me know how you feel in the chat so you don't have mics yet but if you would rather talk versus chat let me know and you're welcome to get a little cheap mic don't go and invest in anything but a little you know inexpensive mic and you can use your voices but for today for the information that we have we're not going to actually use our voices we're going to chat as much as possible so tell me what you feel like how do you feel about this excited cool cool Okay, well, I'm excited too, and I'm really easy going. My name is Chantel. I'm going to be probably your, I'm going to be your primary trainer. There'll be times when someone else may train, so you may get a couple of other trainers as we get closer to the April months. There are things that I really enjoy and I'm passionate about, and I'm really good at explaining. However, there are things that I want you guys to hear the more technical side of, so you'll have other speakers that'll come in and talk about different things, all right? So, if you're ready, I'm ready. <laughs> and I call these like mini boot camp sessions. So, you know, I'm a little bit hyper and all of that. <laughs> so, we're going to get ready and get pumped up and ready to go. Okay? I feel like it's a workout. All of my trainers feel like a workout. <laughs> Everybody's like, you worked us out. <laughs> so let's talk about our program and what's happening. Of course, we're not the CDA Council, so we cannot um, actually give you your credentialing. But we can make sure that you're comfortable, that you have confidence, confidence that you are motivated, that you have the information. So later you won't say, well, Chantel, why was you wasting our time while we were laughing and, you know, having that great time? I still didn't get what I needed. So I'm trying to cover you guys in a lot of different areas. You have this program, and as you see, we also have our online program. So this program is going to give you me in your ears. So I can be that voice that reminds you, you know, what should we say or how should we word that? Or I already do that, but I like the way that you said that. Or, you know, I could definitely rephrase it this way or that's a better explanation. So over these next 30 days, you'll hear my voice and you'll be able to say, what did Chantel say, say about that? And sometimes I'll tell you a story. If I tell you a story, it's not because I want to elongate your time, but I want you to remember the story when the situation comes up. So when we're listening to, to the stories that I'm telling you, I may say something about my kids. I may something, say something off the wall. I may say something about, you know, all type of things, the birds around me. But whatever I'm talking about at that time, as you're taking your notes, you want to say the birds or Chantel's kids or, you know, whatever it is that's kind of would uh, later help you to remember what we talked about. You'll see the slideshow presentation. Use the colors, whatever color slide is there. Use all of those things to help you to retain the information as you're hearing it. Okay? So is that a good game plan? Talk to me if you're available. All right. <laughs> all righty. Okay, so I'm not in this by myself. I know that you all, you know, sometimes you're preoccupied, so I'm not going to be like, Bueller, Bueller, uh, Bueller, did you hear me? I'm not going to do that to you because I know that you all are multitasking, and I appreciate that you all are doing that as well as getting your information. So it's all good. If I'm too loud for your kids, just pull me down just a little bit. And then perhaps if your room is very quiet room, you may want to go ahead and get some headsets um, for that room, okay? Okay, so let's rock and roll. So here are the steps to earning your infant toddler CDA credentials. One of the places that we're looking for is the preparation. What's going to happen before you apply? These are the minimum criteria that are necessary to even do your application process. And some of you guys have had this before with me, but if you have, this is not the full class. This is only the review. We're going to review this from time to time as we're doing it. So don't shut out because you may hear some Something different the next time but it's a very quick review probably three to five minutes of our time today okay so earning 
Anytime before you apply, you need to earn, of course, your high school diploma or your GED or be enrolled as a junior or senior in a high school career and tech program in early childhood education. That is the minimum requirement. Complete 120 hours of formal education training covering the growth and development of children, zero to 36 months. So some of you guys are sending me transcripts and you have lots of growth and development hours, but it, our state doesn't require you to specify the zero to 36 months. So this is where you all as the advocate moving forward can ask, is this going to be for zero to 36 months? Is it going to say zero to 36 months on your transcript? If someone says they're going to gear it towards the zero to 36, then you're going to ask them and say, okay, can you send that into the center so that it can reflect zero to 36? 36 months. You see how this works? So it's okay that we're given the information, but however, going backwards, we're going to have to use what we have on that transcript. We can't alter that information. So it has to be in zero to 36 months with no fewer than 10 training hours in each of the CDA subject areas, which we're getting ready to go through. What are the subject areas and how many of them are there? So it's 120. These are the numbers that you want to keep in your mind. 120 hours, growth and development, zero to 36, with no fewer than 10 training hours in each CDA subject area. And don't worry about writing down the whole slide or anything, because remember, you still have the recording to go back to. Here are the CDA subject areas. Planning a safe and healthy learning environment, advancing children's physical and intellectual development. Now, planning a safe and healthy learning environment, we see that that's our health and safety. Where are we all getting our health and safety classes from this year as a state? Everybody on here is from South Carolina. Don't say it all at the same time, people. Where are your health and safety classes coming from? All right, DSS, online for free. That's right. <laughs> that is absolutely correct through Pro Solutions. Yep, yes, first steps, Pro Solutions. It will happen through online content. That is not tips for child care. You can get there from your two class link, though. Guess what, guys? We have you covered. So it is on our site. And it's something that you can get, you know, directly get there through our site. If you don't know where to go, you can use the site and you can get there. But they are free. You do not have to pay for them. You can get up to 26. Now, somebody do a calculation for me. 120 minus 26 equals what? I know we child care people, but <laughs> 94. So you see how this is working? So what is your new goal with me? Ding, ding, ding. You guys are brilliant. See, that's what I'm talking about, Ziana. That is exactly what I'm saying. Z, but I like Ziana, but Z, I'm sorry. Z, Kimberly, exactly. That is what we're looking at here. We're looking at 94 hours. So that shortens our time together, right? So we are making sure that we take all of those hours. If you get bored, we have you covered, but we would prefer that you take the 26 hours because they are a requirement anyway for most of you guys. And I believe they're going to be a requirement for everybody according to the word on the street. So go ahead, in our environment, we're shooting to take these 26 hours. When you have taken your 26 hours, if you've already taken your 26 hours, once you get your certificate of completion for the 26 hours, you are going to send them to us, okay? A copy. Our fax number. And you'll see it again, or you can always ask me for it again, but it's 866-338-4409. We are keeping a track. We have a staff that is on your stuff, on top of it, okay? So that is a part of what you all are getting, is a staff that is dedicated to getting you guys to where you need to be. So we don't have to, we can scratch planning a safe and healthy learning environment off our list. However, there are two classes that we think that we should go over together, and that's controlling communicable diseases and um, 
back to sleep, I think, even though you all are getting a little bit of the SIDS there, but I think it's just two of them that we are going to go through. So did you all hear me say that we're only doing two, but you need how many? You need 10 all together. You need 10. Yes, so we're doing two, so you can own, that means that you're still going to find eight on your own, or Chantel's not going to be a very happy camper, because that means we're going to have to make it up with you. If that happens, everybody in here hear me, it is okay, life happens. I will be a little bit like, mm, but I, it's not going to be the end of the world. I will work with you one-on-one -on -one and get those done, and we'll have a makeup day. Breathe. I am here. No freak out. We will not freak out, okay? But I need you to communicate. The step, the part about this credentialing that we're not going to go over is this is about professionalism, all about someone stamping the approval of professionalism on each and every one of you and saying that you meet the criteria to be considered a professional in this industry. Every industry has a certain certification process or a professional process that they must meet, a standard of excellence. So this is saying, even if you didn't go to school, we're going to all be on the same page and we're all going to meet the exact same bar at the exact same time. Well, at the, I'm sorry, not the exact same time, but we'll all be able to reach that bar. So the bar is here. People who went to maybe college or a formal educational training system, they've already met their bar. People who work in child development, but maybe you don't go back and get their formal education, does not mean that they can't reach their bar. They may be here, but at the same time, this is all work experience. So it doesn't mean that you don't know the information. We're just here to make sure that, hey, you're getting there, but we're filling in all the gaps. Does that make sense? So you're already filled up with all this information, so you're pretty much there. And you, some of you guys may actually be here, but we want to look at the credentialing just to make sure that we're filling in the gaps and everybody is meeting that same bar. So it's a pretty cool thing about being able to come back and be given all of your credit for everything that you do daily. So it's almost like it may seem like you didn't get fast track, but you really did because you worked your way up the same ladder that someone else may have just gone and did through the formal educational process. So I love the fact that the CDA Council is looking at us and seeing we all in our field because of what we do day to day, we all should be still considered professionals. And that's where we all have to recognize that we have it inside of us. OK, so in the chat, put I have it inside of me. Go ahead. Oh, you know, I'm a motivational coach. I want to see it because you have it in you. Because I know I have it in me. I'm putting mine too. I need it sometimes. I have it in me. That's my voice. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hey, Miss Betty's Daycare, if you could just find the chat when you all get a chance and put your names in it for me. Thank you. Exactly. So we all have it inside of us, and I know that you do. And when you're finished with me, you're going to have it plus some. So somebody else, you're going to be like, you got it in you because <laughs> I already have it in me. <laughs> so the second component is advancing children's physical and intellectual development. This part can come in for us as child guidance. Sometimes it comes in for us as um, growth, growth and development. Sometimes it comes in for us as different ways. So this is where it gets a little bit sticky because you can have your, your fine and gross motor skills there, but you could also have some sort of curriculum there as well. So we'll assess your transcript to see where your information is actually going to fit because the CDA is very, very specific about how we're looking at this component. Okay. So then we have supporting children's social and emotional um, development. How many of you guys are doing PITC? Perfect. So if you're doing PITC, I'm not sure how many hours you're getting for that, 
but you're also going to hit additional hours. So if we're at 94, da -da -da -da, 14, thank you. Then we're going to snatch 14 off. Oh, isn't this becoming a little bit easier and clear to some of you guys what's happening here? So then we're going to go that we only have 80 hours to go. So isn't that a wonderful incentive to be able to say I'm going to take PITC and that may mean that I may not have to do as much as the next person. So you have your pro solution plus your PITC. All of that is counting. Your chunk is getting smaller now. So even though we're doing all of this We'll go back through. Um, Zena, if you can, um, Z, can you let um, Tiandra know what PITC is or what the acronyms for that is? PIC, PITC is one of our state components that will be supporting some of the social emotional components um, in our child care center. They help with like respond. They deal, I'm sorry. They talk and teach about responsive care giving some of the social emotional components to build in the children and they give a very sound great curriculum around how you're actually interacting with the children that's right the more information we have the better equipped we'll be so you'll be able to uh, you probably can just google it and you'll be able to have more information about it so we're looking at this as a holistic component remember See this bar up here? You already have some, but you got to go up a little bit higher. So then you have building productive relationships with family, which is which will fall under our professional development. So any classes that you've taken around um, family uh, parent involvement or even uh, newsletters or how to get your parents involved, um, transferring information from the school to the um, home environment, all of those things will count. We will have you covered in this area. So our classes will cover you completely in that area as well. And for those who are not taking PITC, you will also be covered in this area as well. The only place that we will have a tr uh, challenge will cover you guys, not really challenge, but will lead to the complete end and covering will be the health and safety because we do want you all to take the uh, pro solutions for that, okay? Because most of you all are required to do it anyway. So managing an effective program operation, that's generally what we have seen in the past in, in, in terms of, um, excuse me, in terms of program administration. However, at the same time, this is this does not necessarily mean that you won't have those classes because it's more than just program administration. It also talks about being a lifetime learner. It talks about some other ways, recording, observation. All of those things are all, I'm sorry, they are the next one. But some of those where we found them in program administration will also fall and make sense for us as well but it also talks about working with our co-workers and how we're committed to the professionalism of the industry so that goes in there as well so conflict resolution that also goes into this area then we have maintaining a commitment to professionalism which tweaks the line of the conflict resolution but that's not the only place we have advocacy we have awareness we have um, ethics all of that goes into this area here, okay? So we got you covered in that area. Observing and recording children's behaviors. Now that will be something that you'll talk a little bit about with PITC, but we'll make sure that we go through it and we'll cover that as well. So that's another 10 hours that we'll get together in our time together. We're going to bring two specialists in to talk and cover that area. And we have some, faith, some um, online classes that can cover that component as well. And in addition to it all, we have understanding the principles of child development and learning. This is going to be your domain area. Most of us do not have that strong component here in South Carolina, so we will go through theorists. We will go through developmentally appropriate practices. We will go through child um, whole child concepts. We will go through so many additional things together with our time together so that we can have the full understanding of the principles of child development and learning. Whew, did I wear you out? Such a game plan, such a game plan. And how many of these do we need in each one of these areas? How many clock hours in each one of these components? 
That's right, 10. All righty, guys. So here we also have steps to earning your infant toddler CDA credentials within three years of submitting the application, which we're going to have that before we submit the application. Our deadline with our, our time together is April 15th. So by April the 15th, anyone with an application in or wanting to get their application in on this deadline should have already obtained by that date 480 hours of working work experience in a center setting with children 0 to 36 months. So if you're in the center, you have 480 hours, get in that infant room as often and as frequently as you can. Because I believe that is 30 days plus 15 for us, uh, somewhere up in there. 30 days plus two days. How many days do we have there? I know we have about six weeks, if I'm not mistaken. So if we're looking at it that way, and if we say we have five week, five a day, that's 30. You can at least get about 60 if you just go during your nap time. So definitely get it in some kind of way. Within six months of submitting the application, which we'll have this done by the time we're finished, of 480 hours a week, it is possible. I mean, 480 hours in that amount of time. No, it's not. You have to already have at least 240. So that means that you, your application is going to go in somewhere between May and June. That's 12 weeks. Yeah, your application is going to go in if you have nothing. Does anybody in the room have no hours? Does anyone in the room have no hours working with the, uh, zero to three? So your application isn't going to go in until May the 15th. Is that 12 weeks? One. Okay, and I think Miss Betty has one or two. So is that 12 weeks, guys? Can somebody look at a calendar and tell me what's 12 weeks from this week? So that I can look and see what your deadline is. So your first phase of deadlines, those of you guys who already have your hours with working with children, and then your new employees are going to have a second deadline. May 23rd. Thank you. Okay, so May 23rd is the second deadline. That's going to be the second application. That doesn't mean that you have more time than everyone else. That means that your application and everything still needs to be in. Every, I have to have everything you need because remember, the 480 hours, sit, you see that right there where it says within three years of submitting the application? So we're still submitting the application on April the 15th. We'll submit the hours on May the 23rd. Got it? Everybody let me know that if that made sense. What day are we submitting our applications? Okay, April the 15th, April the 15th. Betty's daycare, give me that date again. Applications are going in. Thank you. Let's see. Did I get everybody's answer? I'm missing some answers. I know I said I wasn't going to bueller you guys, but I need to make sure that you all know that these dates is April the 15th. All righty. One second, I'm just making a notation. All right, so that's what we're doing. Find a CD, CDA professional development PD specialist. Okay, the only person who has to do this step is my Dylan. The May the 13th, I'm sorry, May 23rd date is if 
um, you don't have your 480 hours. So for anyone who's starting with working with children this week, say we're starting this week, because I know that some of you guys hired people, but you all were going to let them come in and start working a little bit because they don't have their own area. So if that is the case, from now until May 23rd, that's the date, that's the date we're going to be looking at getting the rest of their application in. And that's just an update submission. But the application, the portfolio, the $425, all of that goes in by the April the 15th for us. The only person who has to find a CDA professional development counsel, um, person to look at their portfolios is the Dillon Center. We have the, everyone else has a PD um, person who's going to look at their portfolio. We all will go into the system and find us a PD specialist that will come in, um, excuse me, and come and assess our information when we demonstrate, okay? So the only person who has to find them a portfolio consultant is um, the Dillon Center. All righty, apply. In order for us to, uh, cool being cool, so apply apply online for your CDA credentials using your CDA online application system or the complete paper provided in the infant toddler CDA competence standard book. We are going to go through this together. We're going to do it all together. We're going to do it um, in the computer. So you, I mean, we don't have to necessarily do it all together, but we'll be there to support you through this process if you, you know, need a little bit of support. If you don't need support, these are the steps. So it's all good. The non-refundable, non-transferable application fee of $425 must be submitted with your application. Make sure to secure the funds before you submit your payment, your application. Learn the CDA scholarships in your state, which you all are basically going through a form of a scholarship, okay? Once your CDA application has been reviewed and accepted, you will, well, an alternative way to make it, get, to help it get paid. Um, once your CDA application has been reviewed and accepted, you will receive a ready to schedule notification from the council. You'll hear me talk about, we'll do mock interviews, we'll do mock, um, excuse me, where we'll come into the center and we'll do observations to assist you with that that step so we will be available to do that once you get that ready to schedule notification you can't call us and say can you come and try again can we come and try again so when we present the opportunity get on our schedule as soon as possible so that we can come into your center and start doing these because you don't want people to get comfortable or try to get comfortable within two weeks so when they tell you it's time to do the schedule, you need to do the schedule. You need to go ahead and schedule with them and get your person to come and do your observation. Demonstrate. Once you receive your ready to schedule notification from the council, you are ready to schedule your CDA verification visit and your CDA exam. You can't go, well, we'll see. how we're going to do on this verification vid visit, and then we'll do the CDA exam. You're going to do both, okay? So you want to get on there to get that done as quickly as possible. Remember your timeline. Your timeline is to have this done by, what, July 1st? Is that correct? Per your grant? So that's another deadline. Per your grant, per your responsibility for your grant, everybody needs to I'm sorry, guys. Give me a second. It's a, there are people who are still trying to get into the class. I do apologize. Okay. 
So once you receive that, you're going to make sure that you go ahead and follow through and schedule. Steps to earning your, your uh, credentials will be scores are electrically submitted to the council by the CDA PD specialist and through Pearson v View Testing Center. The Pearson View Testing Center will be in your area. It may be if you're living in a larger city, it may be a testing center there, or you may have to come to Columbia to actually take the exam. Because, of course, it's done. It's a proxy exam. That means that you go somewhere and somebody's in another room and they're kind of just making sure you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. Because the council's credentialing comes is granted in actually Washington, D.C. So we're not going to Washington, D.C. to take the test. We're going to make sure that we take that test here with a proxy. The, set, the specialist will send your scores as well. How you did when they came out and they did the observation, that'll be sent to them. A council committee will review the results of your assessment and render a decision whether to award you the CDA credentialing, which everybody in here is going to be awarded, correct? If your credential is awarded, the official CDA credential will be mailed to you. If the committee decides you need more training, which is always a possibility, so we need to make sure we are following the program. Everything that we're doing is intentionally done. Everything, including anything that we do in this classroom, which is why I want to make sure that you all get the recording. Remember this little girl who's sitting, who's, who's leaving out? She has hers. So she want to make you all want to make sure that you get yours, okay? <laughs> Remember, everything we do is intentional. They will decide, if they decide you need more training, the council will let you know your next steps to earning the credential. So it's not like you just walk away and you didn't do anything and it all was a waste of your time. You can't get what you need. That's not the case. Sometimes they just say you need a little bit more. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is about practice, what you, a practicum, being able to actually show and prove the information and the knowledge that you have. So it's not just about looking at it and saying, oh, I'm a good test taker, so I know I got this. That is not it. You have to be a good test taker. You have to be really great at what you do. Your social emotional interaction with the children needs to be in place. How you respond, your response system, the way that you speak to children and people. So if you got a whole lot of stuff going on and a whole lot of people lately have been saying you're a little attitude or moody, guess what your PD is going to see? A very attitude and moody person. If you always got this and every time someone tells you to do something and you're not really coachable or trainable, that's not professional. In our professional industry, a person is coachable, they're trainable, they're really coming to the table recognizing that there is always room for improvement. You don't ever know everything. So even if you read a book from front to back, can we all agree that there are things that we still miss when we read a book from front to back? Exactly. So what happens with the PD with the um, CDA council is they're not necessarily expecting you to tell them through memory everything that happened from beginning to end. They want to make sure that you comprehend or you get the gist of what we're supposed to be doing. We need to be great at what we do every single day, not just for the credentialing, okay? So as if we all are in agreement there, that's pretty much what we're here for and what we're here to do. Are we cool with that? Any questions or comments? Okay. If anything comes up later, because I know we're all kind of preoccupied and doing different things, um, if anything comes up later, please make sure that you give me a call. I am available. Text me. I take texts. And I don't sleep, I promise. Uh, and I, I apologize to my directors because I think you got like an email like 2.30 in the morning. So while you guys are going through this process, I'm probably not going to be sleeping and available to you guys and really, really available to you guys. So we try to keep the class sm classes small so that we can be available. Um, Ariel, or can you address me, Ariel? Ariel is also my assistant, so you can contact her as well. Do you mind the cell number? 
her cell number, she's going to give you her cell number as well. So she is going to be working on this project. So if you want to, you can also contact her. My email address. It's Green at AOL.com. Guys, I, I cannot say this enough. We are your support team. Communicate with us. We will make sure that any barriers that you have will be, you know, kind of, we, we'll, we'll lessen it. Or we'll try to see what we can do. We have some creative and great ways and strategies to kind of help you guys and support you through this. So if there is anything that you need, the information, you know, you got real life happening, you're just not retaining anything, give me a call. I will come up with a solution. We also have the recording. So the recording means that you can actually stop it and go back through. Stop it, go back through. So this is going to be at your own pace. Then we have classes that are going to be online where you um this is one form of an online class but we have self-paced classes so go back and make sure that you completely understand each one of the components so we call them like checkpoints once you do the checkpoints if something isn't there then we're going to call you and say okay so when you went through this this is the answer that was given is that what you meant to say if you know that you need help with your writing that's something to talk to us about we have a couple of writing workshops so that we can make sure that that's in place as well when we put the polls up in the short answers answer them answer them in your best writing style don't answer them like a chat uh, a text Text is okay in this chat area, but let's try to not do as much text so that when we are able, when, when it's time for us to do our competency components, we are now in the habit of writing full sentences again, okay? So, yeah, it's kind of back to school, but not really. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's go to the second component for the day. <laughs> We're going we're gonna to slowly get there, exactly, slowly get there together. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's do a couple of pies. This is the post that we're talking about. So I'm going to give you a couple of polls. And it's okay if you guys work together. If you don't answer and you want to see the answers, that's okay for right now. But I encourage you guys to participate as much as possible. Ah, something I didn't I didn't go through. Let me just go ahead and make sure that that's there. Bear with me. Alrighty, so um, some of these haven't been answered yet. Oh yeah, I can see everything. <laughs> I'm the wizard. Okay, let's see how you guys did. How many CDA content areas are there? There are eight. So go ahead and change your answer. 
in order to apply for the CDA, you need how many hours in working with your group, your age group? Good job, guys. The child care industry is a professional industry. So proud of you guys. Mm. <laughs> What does the CDA stand for? Child Development Associate mm, credentialing. Mm -hmm. Good job. Is there there is no cost for the CDA exam? I just wanted to see what you were going to do here. Um, I didn't give this answer, but there is a cost for the CDA exam. I have not been able to found, find it. I think it's like 325, but I'm not sure. Um, so don't quote me on that, but there is a cost for the exam. So you can go ahead and change your answer. So these are the poll questions, okay? These are the kind of things that you need to know. You need to be aware of what you're getting yourself into. We'll have poll questions like this from time to time. Wasn't so bad, was it? Alrighty, so let me get these taken off. No? So for those people with test anxiety, we'll have some questions there. It's a very safe environment. No one needs to know your answer. <laughs> no failure pass there. Okay, so the second component. Remember, we're building a portfolio. We're not going to talk too much about portfolios today, but you are responsible for a portfolio. So what I would like you guys to do here. And you guys are doing great. We are almost finished. These are some things I would like you to get. It's a three ring binder. Dividers. You need at least eight. Get some high, something a little bit more on the high end. If you're not sure what to get and you'd like us to just send you a package, just let us know. Um, three ring binders. You want to have dividers. And you want to have... Um, what do they call paper cover protectors, sheet protectors? As a strategy, today's class will come with a certificate of completion. So you have a certificate of completion. You'll also have, you see here at the where it says files, these are your two resources for today. So you're leaving with resources. We're going to talk and ask a couple of questions. So the questions are going to help you to be able to do your competency standards, okay? So you're going to have questions. As a rule, in your notes, as a rule, you want to put your certificate of completion, your resources, and your question and notes in the same sheet protector. Okay, can anybody say that you didn't attend a class if you have questions and notes? You all are going on such a fast track that everybody needs to make sure that they have their notes and their questions available also in their portfolios. The questions and notes that you create by your hands. Now, if you type your notes up later, that's fine too, but I will keep my question and notes right there as well. You understand how this works? Always be sure to have your raw information as well as your formal information. Especially when you're doing something like this. This is the support. Um, this is a support program. So we need to make sure we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's. And because all of you all are going to come out super successful, we don't want somebody coming back and auditing our information. But if they do, guess what? We'll be prepared, won't we? So put your raw information in your protector. And then you can make your pretty information and put that in there. But that's fine. You know, questions on the portfolio? Yeah, questions. Um, in your portfolio. So any questions, well, like, okay, for instance, we just did the pods. That was fine. You didn't have to write that down. If you have notes, do you have a question about the portfolio? I'm sorry, maybe I'm reading that one wrong. Put your questions in your portfolio. That's correct. For example, 
Today, we're going to ask the question, describe an ethical dilemma you have faced or observed in early child, as an early childhood educator. If you're not sure for yourself what that means, but by the time we get there, you will, you're going to write that note, you're going to write that question down, okay? You're going to keep good notes. And whatever your notes look like, my notes are written all over the place. I'm such a spatial learner or circular learner, circular learner. I'm such a circular learner that my notes are all over the place. <laughs> I'm not linear at all. So I like to put my, my raw data, my raw information, almost like your scrap papers that you used to have to always have when you pass the um, a math test. I like to put my raw information along with any formal or pretty spruce up information that I have. That way, it's never like we carbon copied everybody's information. You see what I'm saying? And also, when you rewrite your notes, what do you do? You retain the information. So as you're building your portfolio, get in the habit of rewriting or typing your notes into a better format so that you can form, you can organize your thoughts a little bit better. But at the, you know, and if as you do that, you'll also retain the information better. So memory alert, memory alert. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Retention alert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so what we're about to talk about is not going to be the most fun training, but it's going to be a very, very informational component. And we're going to get through it in this little bit of time that we have left. We may uh, finish, you know, or a little bit early, but I'm not making any guarantees. But I want you to pull the fouls. So if you can, if you all are on a computer that you can pull a foul. And if not, then later, Ariel will email you the foul. But right directly under the presentation to your right of your chat, to the left of your chat, you will have ethics, position statement, reaffirmation, and updated copy, and then code of ethics, conduct, 2005. You want to make sure that you pull that information. That is going into your sheet protector for today. Organize yourself. Directors, the first time you may have to, perfect, perfect, perfect. Yes, that's what you want to do is print them off and, yeah. So you want to make sure everybody has a copy for their portfolio. When when the portfolio talks about um, your resource or um, it, it may phrase it kind of funny, like, uh, so how would you, what examples do you have or what research information have you um what information have you researched about that topic? And after researching about this topic, how would you answer such and such a so-and-so? Or how would you um, deal with a particular situation? Well, anytime a question comes up to how you would deal with a particular situation, you want to go back to review and find out a source of information that can back you up, okay? So what we're talking about today is the CDA review roles, responsibility, I'm sorry, review, we did that, and now our roles and responsibilities as a profession, professional in this industry. So what we're going to do is review the NACI Code of Ethics, and I hope that you guys have seen them, seen them before, but more importantly, I hope that you adopt them on a personal level, okay? So sometimes we run into information in our industry that is standard or best practices, but it's not necessarily implemented on the level that everyone has to do it. So it's not a consistent or it's not a, a, a compliancy component. So this isn't a compliancy component that we're going through. We're going through a best practices. And even if you're not a NACI center, you can adopt a group of best practices for the industry that you're in. We adopt this group of best practices even as trainers. And there's a, there's a trainer code, code of ethics and there's an educational code of ethics, which are a part of our professional responsibilities. So the same falls where you guys are as well. All right. So, bear with me while I pull this up. This one copy from the, where'd you copy from what I sent it to you? Yeah, it should be cool. Call her back and see if she's still having problems. 
Okay, guys, sorry about that. Bear with me. Sorry, guys, give me a second. Okay, we're going to go through the Code of Concept, Conduct in 2005, and then we're going to look at the one, the current one. And sometimes you can get too organized that you forget where you put things. <laughs> Just kidding. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Now these are PDFs, so they come, they show up in our classroom just a little bit different than that clean PowerPoint presentation, okay? So I'm going to do my best to adjust, but you can also adjust on your end how you need to. I'm going to just, and if you're chatting with me, I may miss it because of the way the room is set up and I filled the screen. So if you all have to use your personal like phone devices to listen to the recording or you have to use your um, like a tablet and the print is a little smaller, you do have access to make the adjustment where you need to. OK, so this is the two. Sure. This is the 2005 position. So this is a position statement, position statement of the NACI, um, National Association for Education of Young Children. Through the statement, and, and people give statements all the time. You can have like your personal statement, and, and that's something that you're going to be responsible for. This is a collaborated statement that showed where we should stand in this industry. And I know that you guys can... I'm sorry. Give me one second, guys. Okay, give me a second. I have a group that's trying to get in and they're having a hard time. Bear with me. Which link did you all come in on today? Did you come in the link that I sent you through the email? Or did you come in through, how did you guys get in? The email link. Does anyone have that link available that they could just copy and paste into the? Um, well, no, that's the same link. It's here. Anyway. No, you have a different link. I'm sorry. Tell her you're so sorry. Okay, ma'am. I'm sorry. We sent you the wrong link. I'm going to get you the right link right now. Okay, just give me about five minutes, and it should be up. Tell her I'm sending it directly from my email. She's sending it directly from her email. Okay. All right, thank you. What is her email address? Anybody else on our list with an address? Guys, give me a second. Just let me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Let me just make sure that all of our centers who's supposed to be here is here. And I, I didn't, and I apologize. Um, Betty's, House of Smells, Little Treasure, Right Way. Little was little Smurfs. Oh, she's gonna come. That's right. She's gonna come in. Right way. Are you out here? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think that's fine. Okay. 
Okay. Miss Jerry, are you guys here? Okay. All right, cool beans. All right, let me give them a second so that they can get this full um, second half, if you guys don't mind. I do apologize. That's okay. It's recorded. I forgot. All right. <laughs> I forget. I forget. I forget. <laughs> All righty. So then you have the... Um, Alrighty, so this is going to be, um, I'm sorry, so a position statement. So anytime you give a position statement, it's about, it, it has to have these components, or it should have some of these components. Your core belief, where you stand on a belief system, where you see a problem, what other policies or procedures or even personal things that you would like to adopt or you would like to have. And what you what is your standard of excellence? For what is your position of advocacy? You all see how this looks? Because when you all do your personal statements and your personal commitment to early education, you want to incorporate some of these components, not their components, what your belief systems are around them. And if you're adopting, you hear how I'm saying adopting, adopting some of these core values, then you can integrate some of them as well. But you don't want to word for word and say, you know, hey, I just do the same thing Nancy does, and you put every single component. They are an entity. They are an organization. They are looking at things from a different uh, place. So we don't want to do that. So here we have, this is their primary focus of the code on a daily practice with children and their families. Let me go into the, the larger. I want to do it from here. And I know it's going to be hard for some of you guys to see it, but I like my drama too. Just because she hasn't cut and pasted them. I'm sorry. The primary focus of the code is on a daily practice with children and their families in programs for children from birth to eight years of age. Ta infant and toddler programs, which you all are, you know, a part of, preschools, kindergarten, child care centers, hospitals, and child life settings, family care homes, kindergarten, and primary classrooms. When the issues involve young children, then the provisions also need to apply to specialists who do not work directly with children, including program administrators, parent educators, early childhood adult educators, and officials with responsibilities for program monitoring and licensing. So this is why our company also falls into this area of noting we also adopt these, pro these, um, these this, uh, statements. The core values, standards of ethical beliefs, ethical behaviors, and early childhood education and education are based on the commitment to the following core values that are deeply rooted in the, in the history of the field of early childhood care and education. I am reading it to you, and I understand that drives a lot of people crazy, but I need you to understand these components. They are essential to our professional criteria. We have made a commitment to appreciate childhood as a unique and valuable stage in the human life cycle. When we're looking at ourselves as professionals, we have to adhere to something. And then we have to have some type of belief system or core value belief. It's not just we all want it. We like children. We like children so much that we just want to, you know, love up on them. We have to have a little bit more. We need to be a little bit more substantial than that. So this gives us where we are as far as substantiating our role 
and our responsibilities based on based, I'm sorry based our work on knowledge of how children develop and learn we are professionals professionals come with knowledge they don't just come to the to the well I saw that once and my grandma used to do this they go back and say well my grandma used to do this but when I was reading what I found is this but it's very similar to what my grandma used to do you see what I'm saying we can't just go by what we've seen or the way that we were reared we have to have substantial knowledge Appreciate or support the bond between a child, the child and family. That's where our professionalism comes in. When we're walking around and we're grumbling and we're like, hmm, yeah, but I see her mom over there loving up on her. She should send some pampers. That's not what we do. Loving up on somebody and financial commitments to their children did not equate that they don't care about their children. We are professionals. It is our professional understanding and our appreciation to support the bond between the child and the family. So we're really hitting some very, very core beliefs in the way that we should be looking at things. I'm trying to get this up here down. PDF, they never work with me in these rooms. Bear with me. Recognize that children are best understood and supported in the context of family culture. So we are valuing the culture of belief of the community and the society. Respect the dignity, worth, and uniqueness of each individual, child, family member, and colleague. So remember how we're doing the, um, the uh, what are they called? The, Surveys at the beginning of the year, or we're asking people about their family. That's not just a sheet that goes into the folder. We should be looking at that and really understanding the uniqueness of when we ask what age the the siblings are, or where they fit into an area of you know the scale of the children in the household, or who else is the additional person in the household. We should also be respecting each unique individual in our environment. Respect diversity in children, families, and colleagues. So that's not just, oh, we see that you're a little bit different than us and, um, you know, using all the stereotypes and having our good laugh about things. We need to be more professional than that, making sure that we learn more about the culture, learn about and ask questions about everyone's culture in, in a most sensitive form that, um, a sensitive form available to us or that we've been exposed to. Recognize that children and adults achieve their full potential in the context of relationships that are based on trust and respect. So we're looking at this a little bit differently. It's not just, um, you know, we, we all know, as they say, know better, do better. It's not about just knowing what to do. It's about recognizing that we also have a professional responsibility to do it. Most of our centers don't have a true orientation period where we go through these complete ethical codes and standards, and we don't have a way to really do the same thing that customer service does when they orientate you and make sure that we understand what the core values and the belief systems are of this restaurant. Core values and belief systems are of, <clears throat> excuse me, of um, this um, institute, core values and belief systems of this plan. We need to make sure that people understand the core values and belief systems of our industry. Here's the problem. In 2000, there were, and this is the issues or things that we are seeing and why we needed to create these type of ethical conducts and this, state, this statement of committing ourselves to ensure that we also will not find ourselves in these areas. So Nacy also has, I'm sorry, has a statement around child abuse and prevention. In 2000, there were nearly 3 million reports concerning suspected abuse of 5 million children and about 1 million children were confirmed as victims of abuse or neglect. Boys and girls are equally likely to experience negligent and physical abuse. Girls are four, four times more likely to experience sexual abuse. Children of all races and ethnicities experience child abuse. Children of all ages experience abuse, but the youngest children are the most vulnerable. But most abuse happens within families. So knowing that this is 
a problem, we have to be able to also adopt the policies and where things, where we stand as a, uh, a professional industry around child abuse. Adopt policies and practices that promote close partnerships with families. So you want to go back to your handbook. What does your handbook say about the policies with the families or what you should be doing or what is your professional commitment to the families? In your classroom or in your environment, what will you be doing proactively to ensure that there is a partnership with the families? Will you have resources available on the cubbies? Will you have pictures of the families inside the cubbies? Will you ensure that you have enough time for the, each family to feel comfortable with their children in the environment? Will you allow for breastfeeding? Will you have a breastfeeding place for the families? Will you have a family bathroom in case a family member needs to bring a child into the center to use the restroom? Or someone wet their pants on the way to pick up somebody? Or they need to change for soccer? What things do you have in place or Will you have in place to ensure that your families consider themselves a close partnership um, in your center? Promote standards of excellence for early childhood programs, provide families a variety of supportive services. You could have a, a meal wagon come. You can do potluck every once in a while. You can do different things and provide ask for the community to provide meals for your families that meet whatever, are able to do whatever, and you create the criteria. Advocate for children, families, and teachers in family, in, I'm sorry, in community and society. So you're not just in the classroom doing it, you're a complete advocate. This is what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Collaborate with other professionals in the community. Understand your legal and ethical obligations to recognize and report suspicion of abuse. We are what? I'm going to put it, I'm going to look at the chat for this one. What are we considered? It's something to do with reporters. Each professional in our industry is a certain kind of reporter. We are the voice for our children. That's true. But it's a little bit deeper than that. That's right. We are mandated reporters. What does that mean? Do we have an option? It is our professional responsibility. And it is also our ethical obligation to recognize and report suspicions of abuse. We don't have an option. It is a part of what we do. Once you go into that child care center and you're also, you know, you're working in that child care center, you sign on the dotted line, you are a mandated reporter. I mean, we joke with our family all the time, don't you beat that child in front of us. <laughs> You better take that child somewhere else. <laughs> don't, don't, don't you do that in here. <laughs> Not in front of me. <laughs> so we have a responsibility. It's immediate. It is immediate. It is immediate. Okay. Adopt policies and practices that promote close partnership, partners and relationships with families. So it goes again through all of these components. We won't go through each component together. You'll read it. Give me one second. We'll go through the components. Let me get this thing to move for me. We get good business. Acknowledge and build upon family strengths and competencies. So we keep hearing this word competencies. What does that mean? Competence, competencies. We can Google it. I like Google.
just the word itself, competency or competencies, what does it mean? You all can use your resources, your Google. It could be a set of defined behaviors. Yeah, a set of defined behaviors, it is. Mm -hmm. And defined behaviors, they are not necessarily, are they good behaviors, bad behaviors, understood behaviors? Or just clear. You guys are doing good. We are almost at our home stretch, I promise. We'll hear that we'll, we will hear that word every time we meet. So it has to mean something to each and every one of you guys. The development of the behavior, okay. No problem. I speak chat. <laughs> Ah, that's the word I was kind of looking for. Measurements of skills. Measurement. Measurement meaning how much of a skill or behavior or a defined be group of behaviors. So you all were right, getting it together. And we need to work together because if it's something that I keep saying and we're not sure what it is, please, 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 I'm telling you guys, this is you all's training. You got to come back and say, you keep saying this word, what is that? Because that is the biggest, and it's also an evaluation, correct. You can, it can be an evaluation. Mm -hmm. It can be an evaluation of, your, of how competent you are. So it could be considered a measurement of. Again, that would be still assessing or measuring or how, what you feel about it or how much you know about something. Okay? So when we see competency standards, we're looking at the measurement of how much you know about something. Your commitment to the CDA process is to be able to give competency standards, to be able to tell them how much of you, how, the measure of what you know about a particular area. It's a great, great place to be because if we don't know and we keep seeing it, we're never going to be able to answer those questions. All right. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So promote standard of excellence for early educate. I'm sorry, early childhood programs. Provide a variety of supportive services for the families, which we said, and advocate for children, families, and teachers in the community. So you guys are going to read that and be able to give me more information about these components. Collaborate with other professionals in the community. So that's. These are the people in your neighborhood, the people that you meet each day. <laughs> Those are the individuals who you want to be able to collaborate with. Who are your partners? Who are your key people in your partners? I'm sorry, in your communities. Um, who are the key, key people in your communities? Give me a list. Who could, who could be considered a collaborative partner in your area? Hey, Joy, guys, I'm sorry about that. I'm not sure what's going on, but this is recorded. So just to let you know, it is recorded. So please just don't feel any kind of way. Relax. You guys made it in, so you know you, you were doing the right things. I'm sorry that you had the wrong link. I apologize about that. But you want to um, just kind of relax and hang back and just catch up if you can. And if not, I'll make sure that you get the recording, okay? Sorry about that. And 
we're yeah, I can't hear you. We're only using the chat. And the chat is located underneath the um, the presentation. So just fill out the room tonight. Today, I'm sorry. You all are okay. Correct. Educators, libraries, clinics, schools, parents. Mm -hmm. Yep. All of these are your collaborative partners. These are the people in your neighborhood. These are the ones. And remember, we used to do that with the children and talk about who's in your neighborhood, who your who your um, key players are, who the people who you know who are the people who support you. All of that needs to be there. Collaborate with other agencies and disciplines, promoting understanding of child development, support, and empowers families and strengthens advocacy efforts. You all are going to hear advocacy a lot over the next couple of days with us. Understand their legal and ethical obligation, and this is for us as educators, understand their legal and ethical obligation to recognize um, and report suspicions of abuse. We are supposed to be having a Abuse should be abuse and neglect is supposed to be two out two I think two or three hours a year. Um, it, I haven't seen anyone enforce it in our state. Is it a part of the pro solutions um, lineup? I think it is. We'll talk about stress and the difference between how stress shows up and what abuse looks like um, in one of our sessions together. So guys, I definitely encourage you all to come to that one. Uh, pro solutions also has a mandate mandated reporting um, on theirs and I think CCEI also has a training about mandated reporting we're trying to get one built and pushed through for season and D but that does take a little bit of time so it'll probably be after April 15th where you could take it on our system okay but we'll work with it and try to get something together for you guys uh, suspect report suspected child abuse or neglect to the appropriate community agencies and follow up to ensure that the appropriate acti um, actions have been taken. When appropriate, education educators should inform the parents or guardian that a referral has been made. So that's something that we all are responsible for doing. It's not always the easiest way, but it is something that we should be doing, okay? I'm going to go through one more presentation really quickly for you guys because I want us to really look and see what this means for us and what this is. So this one is the re, um, no, this is the 2005 copy. So remember the 2005 and the 2011 one is going to look like something different. So this is when we started. So this is probably how your first uh, professional statement is going to look. It's going to be, you know, a little bit short and to the point. And that's fine. You want to just make sure that you have these key components there as you're uh, writing your your position statement. What is your position? How you feel about it? What is what 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 you will adopt? What principles you will adopt? Will you be adopting any of the NACI standards around this, or the code of ethic, or the statement of commitment? Okay. Give me one second. Let me get that other presentation rocking and rolling. Okay, a part of our commitment as professionals is to also learn about different things. Learn about new technology so that we can introduce new technologies to the children. So I'm very proud of some of you guys. I mean, well, everybody for getting on, on here. Some of you guys may have not participated in anything like this before where we're actually doing like a live webinar and we're going screen to screen. But I'm also getting ready to introduce you to something called a Prezi presentation, which is so awesome to me. I love them. Um, but this is a different type of presentation. It's not, it's not, it's sort of like PowerPoint presentation, but it's called a Prezi, P-R-E-Z-I. And the web link is there as well. You have, Lakeisha, I love them. I absolutely love them. I have a few of my own, but this one is one that's not mine, but we will be using it, okay? So I have to share my screen to do this, so give me a second. You're going to come into my world. Yeah, I come with my own theme music and all. <laughs> okay. So this is the Code of Ethics. This is a Prezi presentation. It's a little bit different. I'm going to fill the screen out so that we can look at it together. And we're going to go through it. So the NACI Code of Conduct. And it just gives a little bit more of an understanding. So what is NACI? NACI is the Na National Association for the Ed 
education of young children. So a part of what they do is to make sure that, hey, they're advocating for the behalf of all children who are learning or in learning institutes. What is the code of ethical conduct? NACI developed guidelines for responsible behavior in early childhood education. Someone said that competency is also a behavior or defined behavior. So that shows one of their competencies. They get it. They get that behavior is important and how we're looking at developing behavior in early childhood education is important. Sets forth a common basis for resolving ethical dilemmas encountered in early education and care. So we know that we have challenges and we have conflicts that come up and dilemmas and situations that happen in the child care environment that are very, very real. Ethical responsibility versus ethical dilemma. Ethical responsibilities are clear, cut, and spelled out. That means that that, that shows that we have this code of ethics that says this is what we should do, this is what we should do, this is what we should do. Ethical dilemmas are conflicting professional values and responsibilities. You know, I kind of know what I should do, but I don't know if that's really how I want to handle that situation. It's more of the internal dilemma or where our core belief systems are, which is why it's important to have your, your personal statement of beliefs and personal statement of understanding so that you don't stray when it comes to how you're going to deal with things. You're able to go back and you're able to look at it and say, nope, I'm dealing with this this way because this is how I truly feel about it and this is what I stand for. The code. The NACI, you heard, the code, yeah, I'll do that from time to time. The code, yeah, I changed my voice. The NACI code of ethical conduct is to inform, not prescribe, inform, not prescribe, answers in tough decisions that teachers and other early educate, I'm sorry, early childhood professionals must take as they work with children and their families. So informing versus prescribe, what does that mean to you guys? To be informed about something means that you have these choices. You have a list of why this is the best thing to do. Prescribe means that we're giving it to you and we're saying everyone must adopt this. Kind of what I was talking about earlier. We don't have to do this. It doesn't, no one's going to come and say you're doing the wrong thing. But at the same time, there's a best practice that says, hey, based on informed information, guys, did you see this? Maybe this is something we should be following. The ethical code of, I'm sorry, the code of ethical conduct. I think it's a tongue twister. The code of ethical conduct contains core values, a conceptual framework, ideals reflect, uh, to reflect, and, I'm sorry, reflect aspirations of practitioners. So, you know, what is it that we're seeing in our community? What, what should we be doing? Who are collaborative partners? All of those components. Principles intended to guide conduct and assist practitioners in resolving ethical dilemmas. You being the practitioner. You're the person who is practicing what you should be doing and the best way to handle a particular situation. Ethical responsibilities are kind of grouped up. Ethical responsibilities to children, ethical responsibilities to families, ethical responsibilities to colleagues, and then the ethical responsibilities to community and society, and then your statement of commitment. So you see that there are components to this. Here's an example of an ethical dilemma. When napping, four-year-old Timothy's mother asks you to keep him from napping after lunch. She tells you that when he does... She can't get him to bed until 10 p.m. and she gets up at 5 a.m. to go to work. She's not getting enough sleep. You found that he needs his nap to stay in good spirits. You see how I said good spirits? Look at that strength-based language there. <laughs> you found that he needs his nap to stay in good spirits throughout the afternoon and to get the most out of his time in the classroom. I'm going to go to you guys. How would you handle this situation? This is what's considered an ethical dilemma. First, wait, okay, shorten his nap. We may be able to do that. 
Is it best practice for Timothy, the four-year-old, to get sleep? So that's what makes it ethical. We know that in our, based on our knowledge and our understanding of what, what we do as professionals, it's better if he gets sleep. It also assists with routines, but more importantly, it assists him in being okay because his day is long. Even though her day is long, his day is equally long. Five o'clock till nap time, that's quite a few hours because nine times out of ten, he's also up at five o'clock because remember she said get up to go to work. All children need, he needs his nap. She needs to come up with a sleep schedule at home. That's correct, Tiandra. And, 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 but this is, again, this is where we go into the ethical area because our best practices says one thing. Hey, how many parents in the room kind of get that though? So when the parental part starts to kind of stir up in us, then we start to have the dilemma, right? Because on the parent end, <laughs> it's a little challenging. I saw more people type and I want to see what your responses were. Go ahead and send this in. There's no right or wrong there. But the, for me as a parent, you know, to have a kid that's running around and I'm very, very sleepy, is it's tough. But I like the way Tiandra handled it. He needs to get his nap. You know, we and how we say that? We understand, but we have to follow our protocol in the center also. We have to follow our protocol, but also our, our professional experience and our, you know, best practices in our industry supports when children are napping they tend to be able to handle the afternoons better. So we can also use that. That's why we'll have our resources built so that we can make that correlation. But all of those are great answers. Let me go back to the full screen. So what do we do? Identify the problem. It does, it does, I'm sorry, identify the problem. It does involve ethics. No, seek a solution. Does it involve ethics? Yes, consult the code. So if we think that, you know, it doesn't, it's not ethical, we're not having a problem with it, we can make it happen, kind of like Jerry said, shorten his nap, we seek the solution. If you're challenged with it and you're like, Ugh, best practices, the center protocol, this kid is a terror after he doesn't have a nap, you know, <laughs> then we want to go and consult the code. See how that works? <laughs> it's not prescribed that you do anything, but you have enough information that you can go back and say, you know what, what was my personal statement around this? I think that children should be well-rounded, balanced, healthy. You know, a sleepy child is an unhealthy child. They can hurt themselves, you know, all the different things. They can be cranky, etc." Identify who is involved, the children, your family, colleagues, and sometimes it may be even a community thing. The children are involved. The family is definitely involved. It's possible that colleagues, because if you peer or team teach, you may have that. And also the center protocol, as you mentioned. The community for this particular situation, no. Any questions about that component? Okay. Cool to be in the bean to beans. Alrighty. I'm going back into the room. Oh, I just cleared the room. Oh, here it is. <laughs> All righty. So today you have, and just make you like a little chart. Start making a chart of our time together every day. You are leaving with 
two resources. I'm going to go through the last one really quickly. I'm not going to read it because it's very, very similar to the first one, but I do want you to do the side by side, okay? That's something that you'll do on your time is that side by side. This is building your portfolio and getting you ready for all of your competency statements, okay? You can teach yourself and not do it, but you want to make sure that you have a well-rounded portfolio. As we're doing things, we need to make sure that everything that we do in here is intentional. We're doing it with the intent to, and we're looking at it and saying, okay, where is this going to fit in? You are responsible for having an understanding of ethics. You will be responsible for having an understanding of advocacy. You will be responsible for having an understanding of professionalism. Did we hit on those things today? All righty. Because, see, I don't want nobody to say Chantel don't teach now. Come on. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what I am leaving you guys with is to decide your position. Okay, so we did discuss today the code of ethics. We also discussed portfolio and resources were provided. You need to decide your position and you need to do your position statement. Here are some writing prompts. I'm going to leave you, give you, I'm going to send the, um, I, uh, can I get everyone's email in the chat, please? Are you, wait, first, before you do that, are you comfortable with putting your email in the chat? If not, Text me. Don't don't no 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 don't don't do it that way. Don't do it that way. Don't do it. Don't don't push the scene. Don't push the scene. Don't push the scene. Back up. Back it out. Back it out. Back it out. <laughs> beep beep beep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. There's my because this is a recorded line. I have to be very careful and I have to remember when we're recording. If we were to use this again, we would blank out the names, but this is only supposed to be circulated within us. I mean, within, you know, our group. So we should be fine. But here is my telephone number. Text me your email address with your name, please. And then is it okay for me to add you guys to the reminders? You may get other class invitations from time to time, um, you know, and I apologize if that happens, but primarily I'm going to make sure, try to make sure that you only get your classes and your reminders, okay? If you get reminders or an invitation to classes, you do not have to pay. Your code is... CSP Support 16. That will override your payment fee of $10 or $15 or whatever it is for that class. If you miss a class, contact me so that I can put you on the list. Like if you get sick or something so that you can um, get additional reminders for additional classes. And I'll tell you which ones are relevant to your needs, okay? So you have a couple of options. We're not just, this is not all we do. We're like a humongous, you know, group of classes and all that other stuff. We got some other things going on. So we can support you in other ways. Okay, is this the code to log in? Is this the code to log in? Um, when you say, is this the code to log in, are you talking about to log into two class? Or to log in here. We always log in here as a guest. To two class? Okay, you have to create your own two class login. Oh, in this class, this is the link. This is going to always be the link. What I gave you is the, I'm sorry, the what I gave you was the code to override an invitation so that you can get the link. So, for instance, you're all going to get invitations every day. You're not going to be at work. But you're not necessarily sick, but you're not going to be at work. Maybe you had some a prior commitment or you had something else that you need to do that day or you weren't scheduled to be at work. You can um, click on that link to get your own link to the class. But today I'm going to make sure everybody has the link to get in here. It's, gonna, it's not going to change. But there may be a time where there's a foster care class that I teach that may be relevant to you guys. We'll add your code to the list. 
so that if you're interested in that class, you can come into it. Okay, so that's how that works. You all gave me the link. If you all scroll up, you should be able to find it. Here it is. To, the link to this class will not change while you guys are together. Unless, you know, I let you know. Okay, give me one second. I think I have a couple of pies. And then we're out of here. Yes, I'm sorry, Z. Yes, the class is the same every day. Unless I tell you otherwise, like we won't have class on the 17th. You guys are so smart. I'm telling you. And if there is a build on, so try to get the link to listen to it at least before the next class. Like so next tomorrow's class is kind of gonna build on this one a little bit. And um I, I, I. Joy, your group, just try to listen to the first area, first part of the class, okay? Sorry about that. I'm not sure what that was about. But you all will have the link to listen to the first part of the class. You guys rock. I mean, absolutely. You see that? Okay, let's look at this one. You must have 80 hours that reflect the following. You must have 80 hours that reflect the following. All CDA content areas, 10 in each CDA content area. It doesn't matter as long as you have 120. It should be, let me broadcast that one. The answer for this one is 10 in each CDA content area. To be credentialed in zero to three, you must have zero to three growth and development, three to five growth and development, any growth and development, 10 hours in growth and development, zero to three. Okay, so the answer for this one is zero to three growth and development and 10 hours of growth and development, zero to three. So it's zero to three growth and development and 10, yeah, both. If it's letting you do two, but if not, the answer, the best answer, I'm sorry, I apologize, is the last one. <laughs> sorry about that. It's the last one, the last one, the last one. Ten hours of growth and development, zero to three. So all of yours should be zero to three growth and development. Ten hours of it. Okay? And that will count. That's the only way that you'll get your credentials if you have those 10. Most of us do not have 10 specified in 0 to 3. So next week is a very important week for us because we go through the growth and development next week, I think. I'll double check the calendar, but I'll get you guys all a calendar. It'll be in your guided instructional area on to class. Name one of the CDA content areas. Good job. Planning a safe and healthy learning environment. Guidance and counseling, growth and development. Okay, so yes, they these are correct. They're just not 
that's not what they're called. We don't have a growth and development quote unquote criteria, but we do have the the, the um the area that meets that same need. It's the physical and intellectual is what it's called. Four C's and the D has growth and development. So we have to remember we're moving ourselves from our state functional areas to the content um I'm sorry, the functional areas of the CDA. All righty. Any questions or comments? Nope, you're going to get a different um, link. I'm not sure if I answered that question. I'm sorry, um, Z. Nope, you're going to get a different link to watch the recording. I'm going to email that to you. Did I miss anybody's questions? I'm not a funny person. Sometimes I just don't see everything in the... I'm, I'm just doing my disclaimer. I'm not a funny person, even though I think I have a great sense of humor. But I just don't always get to see everything in the chat. So if some, sometimes if we're different parts of the system, I may not see it. So just always put it back in there. Or when I say questions or comments, be sure to give it back to me, okay? Because I'm not being funny if I didn't see it or if I skipped over you or anything. All right. OK, so here are your discussions and writing prompts. These are going to go into your notes. You all almost finished. We got three minutes. I'm so sorry to keep you the whole time. But, you know, it's the first day. It's the first day. And we got a lot of work to do. <laughs> I'm going to give you some time to write this. Some of you guys are going to it's going to um, excuse me. Aye, aye, aye. Some of you guys write faster than others. So it's here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger for you. I would like you to try to answer these questions. You don't have to do it in today. We're going to start our day tomorrow with them. I don't mean to give homework. But we have so much to do. So little time to do it. Isn't that a um, Dr. Seuss rhyme or something? Maybe not. <laughs> Stretching. Just kind of keeping you awake. Uh, let me see if I can get it bigger. Ah, there you go. Oh, did I throw you out of chat? Is that better for you guys? Oh, sorry. Changing the face. All righty. Well, it was fun with you guys today. Once you're done with um, writing those down, you can close out. See you guys. Have a great rest of the afternoon. I just can't get this thing right. Well, you guys are welcome. Uh, Miss uh, Miss Jerry, can I get the names of your people, please, that are in here? And Miss uh, Betty, can I get the names of your people that are in here, please, so that we can make sure that everybody gets uh, credit? And Miss Joy, sorry, can I get the names of your people? Oh, you have the other name. Okay. And as you guys, oh, that's what it is. I didn't get any text from you guys. I didn't get, did or did I? I'm sorry. My phone, my phone. Dee's going to help me out. Oh, I got them. I got them. I got them. Well, I have three email addresses. We should have them in two class. I think we have them in two class. When you, whoever is not in the room, um, directors, whoever is not in the room, once they finish, they need to text me and let me know that they finished this class. Doesn't matter if you don't get it done tomorrow, if you're sick or something like that. Just whenever you get day one done, I just need to know, okay? So you get right the right credit for it. We're putting it in as pending credit if you don't do it live, and then it goes into full credit when you do um, when you do the recording, okay? 
uh, the recording. I said I was gonna re I was gonna send it to you. I I'm sorry, I misspoke. Uh, it's gonna be in two class. The recording will be in the two class. Sierra, what's your last name? Thank you. So you're going to log back into two class tomorrow. And when you go into two class, you're going to have a welcome page. You're going to go to, let me show you real quick. Okay. If you all have time, if not, I understand. Did everyone get your writing prompt? This will be in two class as well. Let's see if I can move it. Well, no, because once I share my screen, and eh, I'll do it tomorrow. I don't want to, I, I won't, I'll, we'll just do it all together tomorrow. Don't worry about it. Okay, cool. All righty, guys. You all have a great rest of the day if you all are done. If not, it'll be on a recording for you. All righty. TP. Wasn't too, it wasn't too bad, was it? You think we'll have fun together? It was just a deep and heavy, it was a heavy topic. But some of them are a lot more fun than these. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Um, Joy, I'm calling you in a second so that I could catch you up. Sorry about that.